This is Season 3 of The Score, the Team Roping Journal's regular podcast where the team roping world talks. We've told the stories of some of the greatest cowboys, horses, and moments in the sport, and we're so far from done. In 2020, we'll bring you more of what you've come to expect, like interviews with the best cowboys and cowgirls we know, and we'll dive even deeper into subjects you care about. Look for more audio editions of the Team Roping Journal stories you might have missed in print, and learn about the great horses shaping the sport and great challenges facing our industry. All this and more in 2020. I'm Chelsea Schaefer. Hey everybody, this is Chelsea. Today's episode is going to be brought to you by Fastback Ropes. Caitlin, our assistant editor and my co-host, is going to do the interviews because she is lucky and she is in Arizona right now talking to the guys who won the survey. So enjoy the episode and I will talk to you more at the commercial break in the middle of the show. Hey everyone, it's Caitlin Gustav. Before we jump into today's episode with the Mike Servi Jr. Memorial Pro Classic Open winners, I just want to give you a little rundown about what happened yesterday. Obviously, Clay Tryon and Chase Tryon won that roping. They were 32 and 23 on five head, and that paid $16,622. If you weren't there, or if you weren't watching on our Facebook or Instagram, I was trying to keep up with their runs. They pretty much had it won since the first round. I know they didn't pay for the first round, but they won the first round. And they just kept knocking their steers down, and they made it look easy. It was really fun to watch them. So congratulations to those two. I know they came in high call, and their steer kind of went left. Clay got him roped, and then Chase just swooped right in there and healed him. So Really good watching. Congrats again, you guys. Uh, Clay Tryon also won second with his partner, Jake Long. They were 32-28 and 28 on five head, and that paid 13756 a man. Man, Clay Tryon had a day. There's a reason why he is the jackpot king, and it showed yesterday. I'm just going to run through the rest of the results. Third was Luke Brown and Patrick Smith. They were 33 and 51 on five head. Then that paid 10890 a man. Fourth was Charlie Crawford and Brock Hansen. They were 33 and 93 on five. That paid 8025 a man. Fifth was Bretton Hall and Jalen Eldridge. They were 34 26 on five head, and that paid 5158 a man. And sixth was Jake Barnes and Calgary Smith. They were 34 and 42 on five head, and that paid $2,866 a man. They also had a 15 incentive, and that went to Wyatt Imus and John Phillip. They were 34 and 8 on five head, and that paid $2,500 a man for that incentive. And in the short go fast time, first went to Brenton Hall and Jalen Eldridge. They were 569 on their short round steer, and that paid $1,000 a man. And second in that fast time short go was Wyatt IMS and John Phillip. They were 587, and that paid 700 a man. So it was a great roping. It was a long day. I think the roping started maybe a little bit after 10:30 and got over around 6:30. That's a good about eight hour day, I'd have to say. Um, it was a long day. It was warm out, but it was some great watching. Steers held up. Ropers looked phenomenal. I definitely suggest someone heading out there. But enough of me talking about Arizona and the roping. Let's let the champs talk for themselves. Enjoy this interview with Clay Tryon and Chase Tryon after they won the Mike Servi Jr. Pro Classic Open in Casa Grande, Arizona. And remember, this episode is brought to you by Fastback Ropes. And what better than having a Fastback and Dorsey win the roping. Congrats, Clay Tryon. Hey everyone, welcome to The Score. I'm sitting here with the winners of the Mike Servi Jr. Pro Classic Open Roping, Clay Tryon and Chase Tryon. Can you guys walk me through your runs today? I don't know if this is true, but I think we led from the first year till the last year. I don't know if we anybody passed us at any point, but I think we led it from start to finish. So sometimes it's just your day and... Uh, you know, I, I've come to this roping a lot. I felt like I've drawn as bad as you can possibly draw. And today they put, today they paid me back the favor, and I drew some good ones, me and Chase. We, we kind of let everybody catch back up. We had such a lead. We just 
kind of I just went to start catching mm -hmm. I about messed it up the last one about went too slow I wasn't trying to and then me and Jake when I went second we kind of had some runners and our last one was probably the best here in the herd and I about messed him up but uh, it just worked out um, it's a long day that's a beating what we I just went through right there. how many hours was I that, that we were too here? long I felt bad for more I, I was a beating right there so to get through that uh, winning it you know and then winning second yeah. that's I mean, I've had some good days in my career. This is one of the better ones. You know, mm -hmm. anytime you went first and second with 200 teams, Wendy Ryan, I, I got first, second, third one time with a couple hundred. Mm -hmm. That's still the greatest day I've ever had, but this is right up there as far as jackpots go because it's hard to win first and second nowadays with this group of guys. Right. I was going to say, you guys look pretty clutch all day watching all your runs. Uh, Chase, kind of talk about Clay's handles today. Oh, they're easy. They're always easy. <laughs> he does a good job. It's easy healing for the best in the world. Right. And you guys... You guys were high call back, and you guys ended up being 32 and 23 on five head, and it split $33,244. How's that going to kind of help you guys going down the road right now? It's the beginning of the your guys' run for the year. so. Well, the only way to make money roping, in my opinion, is at the big jackpots in the NFR. I mean, there's a few rodeos now, Houston and, uh, you know, the American if you win first place. But mm -hmm. other than that, it's kind of all if you have a good jackpot year. So I've always taken jackpot in serious and tried to do good at it. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so obviously it's a big win. Anytime you win 30000 in one day, that's a, that's a big win nowadays. Um, so, uh, you know, it feels good to finally get it done here. I've never won it. Been here a mm -hmm. bunch of times. Glad to finally do it. Gotcha. And what about you, Chase? Well, I've never won a major jackpot before, so it mm -hmm. felt really good to close it out. But uh, I've I've been healing really bad lately at the rodeos and stuff, and it felt good to just make it through the whole day. Mm -hmm. Like he said, we started off good and then just kept going the whole day. It felt, it felt good. Do you think, I mean, obviously it's a five-header, and I don't know if this is a dumb question or not, but since everything's kind of going into the tournament style, do you think this kind of – like you said, you're kind of having a slow winter, but does this kind of help you guys just having to be able to go knock down runs? Oh, this is the way roping should be. I mean, mm -hmm. You know, not just one steer at a time. I mean, when it's one steer at a time, a lot of times it's just, I don't know, it's not the best roping. If you if you won today, you rope good. Mm -hmm. Whether we had won it or not, I would have said, you know, any of these big yeah. ropes, when it's like this and you win it, you, you roped good. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, no, nah, it just feels good to do it. I'm kind of old school. I like this kind of stuff. But it was, uh, mm -hmm. like I said, fun to do it. I haven't had much success here, so like I keep saying it again, but sometimes you get in a groove places and it's easy. You win every time it feels like, and there's certain places you can't ever get in a groove, and today I finally I messed up. I was good on through with another guy messed up, so uh -huh. uh, I don't know. Like I said, just glad to do it. The big jackpots are huge. I wish there was more of them like this. Mm -hmm. How about you, Chase? <laughs> it just feels good. <laughs> Not, nothing more. So, how many times have you been to the survey? I don't really know. I mean, I, I've, I haven't been the last few years because they kind of put the American, mm -hmm. you know, kind of right on top of it. And it was hard to do it all. I mean, I've probably been here, though, 15 to, I don't know, probably 15, 16 times probably been here. I think I won second twice, two other times, uh, but never won it. Gotcha. And, I mean, you're known as one of the winningest jackpotters there is. Like Chelsea said in your last podcast that you were on, that you're the jackpot king. What kind of goes into that? Well, a lot of it's just having a long career. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I've had that. It's kind of when they start talking about stuff like that, it just means you're getting old for the most part. <laughs> but no, it's good. It's better than to not have done it. Mm -hmm. and, you know, I was tired of always being broke, and I see these older guys that were better than me in jackpot. And so when I was younger, I tried to figure it out. I entered every mm -hmm. pot, just get my butt whipped every time, and then I kind of figured out how to do it. And like days like this, you need a good horse. My horse is really good. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, I, I, that's part of it. I mean, you mm -hmm. can't do it without a great head. You can, you can win every once in a while and yeah. luck out. You can't, you can't win first and second. You, can't. you have to be on something good. I think so. I think so, I too. too. <laughs> it, you can think it's all you, but it's not. My horse did, did really good. And lately, last year, I won quite a few big ropings on him. Mm -hmm. And so, like I said, it was good to do it, you know, this and year, too. What horse was that? Johnson. Okay. Yeah. Johnson's always pretty clutch, I feel like. Yeah, Johnson's one of, I mean, I've, you know, he's one of the best horses I've ever had. He, he's easy to get along with. And mm -hmm. I just like my Johnson. <laughs> he's a pretty, pretty, pretty sweet little horse. He really is. So uh, I've enjoyed uh, getting riding. It's been pretty fun. Awesome. And Chase, were you on Friendly today? Oh, yeah. Um, kind of talk about Friendly. I mean, I feel like you ride him pretty much everywhere. Hi. Yeah, I have another one that I rode the other day, but he's still a little bit sore. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I rode really bad that day, but 
I thought he was good and he was just a little bit off. And I missed some steers. Though. He's been pretty clutch. I've owned him for a long time, since 2013. Oh, wow. Yeah, six. So you kind of, you both know each other's game. We've been through some stuff. <laughs> gotcha. Hey everybody, it's Chelsea, and I want to talk to you a little bit about Fastback Ropes, who are sponsoring our episode today. Their two best sellers are the Cobalt and the Excalibur. They're poly blend core ropes. The Cobalt is a perfect combination of poly and dyed nylon, resulting in a highly durable rope. It's medium in diameter and weight, and will likely appeal to ropers who prefer more tip weight and less body or bounce. Fastback's Excalibur is a nylon poly blend with core construction. It's a best seller, and it's another medium and diameter rope and weight with core construction. It's durable. It's got reduced body and no bounce, and swings consistent in all weather. We're going to do something a little bit different this show. So I told you about the ropes. Now I'm going to give you a fastback tip. Today's tip is about breaking in ropes. Surprisingly, a lot of people don't understand or know the importance of it. To break in your new ropes and help them last longer, rope 5 to 10 and then loosely coil back up and let it rest for a day or so. This will give the rope time to recover and draw back up. It helps extend the life of your rope. The rope makers at Fastback Ropes recommend that strategy, so I guess you probably all better stick to it. Again, thank you to Fastback for bringing us this episode, and thank you for the Fastback Tip of the Day. Can you describe this setup for me? Because it's kind of unique, and... I know yesterday um, there were some horses that were falling on this dirt. So just kind of talk to me about this setup. Oh, I don't know about the dirt. It seemed better today. Mm -hmm. It was. Uh, hey, the problem is when you start letting them out. Yesterday the score was long, long, mm -hmm. hard. Today they shortened, which made it a better rope than I thought. Yesterday, I mean, I was doing pretty good and messed up, but it felt like it's just slick out there, and you're going 100 miles an hour. Uh, today was to me a perfect kind of setup. I'm not, I said it before I. Mm -hmm won the rope and so um it was still long but yet you didn't have to just kill your horse off but i don't know every rope and there's always something so you mm -hmm. just gotta you know these steers are good steers they run um hot out today they stayed pretty strong really for as many times as they went and as hot as it mm -hmm. felt like it was today uh, like i said great rope and overall and how far did you have to squirm out today uh the measurements were foot under with the rope barrier which usually pulls even it was like tail the pin probably tail okay. by but the box is pretty long so it wasn't like you were just on top of them. They were out there. Even on a good one, they were out there mm -hmm. a little ways. And then the good ones you can catch up to is pretty good. The one runners, you had to chase them ways. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. And what about healing in this setup? Like, kind of talk about the setup for healing. Uh, this bar the barrier was pretty short. I felt like when it's fresh steers, it's all on the header. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, so, like, you know, last night they either made it really hard on the healer or real easy. And then today, even the first couple rounds, it was like that. Mm -hmm. And if you got a runner, it was tough. But just the better horsepower the better headers were they made it a lot easier on the dealers gotcha gotcha and uh this podcast is brought to you by fast pack ropes so uh, what rope were you using today and why I used, uh i used the cobalt today um i've just been using them jackpot and i feel pretty good fast mm -hmm. uh that rope's pretty tough because it took a beating today um i might be done now because you <laughs> face that hard that many times and put some kinks in it but mm -hmm. uh it uh it, it's a good rope i've been using it kind of all winter mm -hmm. at the jackpots and some some of the rodeos so just kind of the four strand core is the way of the future right they're, they're making them pretty good and so that's kind of just what, we, what i've been using gotcha and you guys don't norm, like typically enter together what what made you guys want to enter here well i i just i rope with him sometimes um i usually rope with uh, jay the second partners and he wasn't coming mm -hmm. And uh, I was kind of waiting on San Antonio, and then both of us didn't do any good. And so I called him to rope. He yeah. didn't call me. He acts like I never asked him. But I, I called him to rope, so <laughs> or text him, or however we do it nowadays. But uh, so no, I try to rope with him as much as I can. We've actually we did pretty. We we were, had a lot of good things started at these ropings and never mm -hmm. got through. One was kind of starting to piss me off, honestly. <laughs> last night was my fault. We were, we should have won the roping last night, and I jerked mm -hmm. the third one down, which I didn't really think Ooh. I was gonna. Yeah. And then we come back like fifth, and probably could have won second, and I lost my rope. Kind of. 
wasn't even mad, but I was like, I didn't come here to win fourth, and mm-hmm. so I was kind of running. I reached, and I just I kind of bobbled my slack and lost my rope. So, and then we were doing decent at rope on the other night, and he missed. So, uh, you know, we got. You know what though? We won the right one. Yeah. And so a lot, of, a lot of winning is <laughs> win the right one for the week, and uh, we did do that. And so, but uh, we, we've done decent at some jackpots when we rope together. So mm-hmm. he, he's been healing good, and nowadays. It's a, it's a two man deal. There mm-hmm. it ain't you, you know back in the day, Speed got a lot of credit for being fast, but Rich got two feet every single time. Mm-hmm. And, and nowadays the only difference is that is both guys got to go faster. Mm-hmm. You won't win nothing if you both just go for the catch. So we drew good today, but I thought we made good runs, and uh, that's what it takes to win these bigger opens. And guys were on the chase the whole time. The, the other teams that were right behind us too yeah. drew pretty good too. So. Um, you know, and you were one of those other teams that were right behind yeah, you. Yeah, I didn't know I was good for Jake. Mm-hmm. But Jake wanted to whoop it down there. He likes to do it. But mm-hmm. uh, but me and him could have went faster, too. It's like sometimes when you get way out in the lead, it's like don't be dumb, break the barrier, mm-hmm. run all the way to him, and we this is easy if we don't, you know. And uh, so that was part of it. We could have went faster, but we went fast enough. I was going to say, you guys, We, went, we was... went fast enough before 100. So I about messed it up. But, like, yeah. sometimes with this big money, I don't want to throw away. I wasn't going to break the barrier, and Sir kind of went out and went left. I didn't mm-hmm. want to take a bad shot. And if we had one second, he'd have been fine with it, and I'd have been fine with it. And mm-hmm. I'm glad we won it because we were having it back then. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, how do you, I guess, I always ask this question just, I think, mainly for myself because I get nervous in short rounds. But going in high call back, how do you kind of just put all those teams, because everyone is on fire in that short round. Like, mm-hmm. How do you kind of block out those teams that are right before you before you back in the box i don't block them out i watch so i know how Mm -hmm. fast i gotta go so i actually do pay attention i'm not in my own world because it does matter a lot Mm -hmm. um if they went fast i'd went faster you know or tried to um so no i pay attention yeah that's the thing about when you get decent and you go to a lot of setups and if you're a lower number level Mm -hmm. roper roping the only one way to figure it out is you have to enter. Yeah. Whether you go to some $15 mans, go to $50 mans. I know everything's 150 but there's mm-hmm. no substitute for just being in that situation. And it's not that big a deal. It's one mm-hmm. more steer. Um, but I haven't done it. Jackpot and I used to do so good all the time. I felt yeah. like in the last few years I haven't roped as good. Last year I roped good, but this year I haven't even done that good. And mm-hmm. So, I mean, I'm bared down too. I was a little angry last night at myself. <laughs> so sometimes you got to take a drive to Whataburger by yourself <laughs> to get right and come back and that might have fixed me yep it needed it no one needed to go with me when i went to water it needed to be me alone over there and back and i got i feel like i got right after that gotcha gotcha and what about you chase um well healing i feel is like a little different a lot on the header mm-hmm. i just kind of stuck to myself and kind of you know my deal depicts on how fast he turns and i try to just ride the same corner and set my shot up the same every time mm-hmm. or that's what i've been doing lately but uh yeah, I feel, I, mean, I feel like a, there, a lot of that's just on the header. Gotcha. How fast they turn them. Also, I whipped myself the other night after I missed. Pretty myself pretty yeah. Hard. And, Chase, what happened? Who else were you roping with today? And kind of what happened on those teams? And uh, we were good. Well, we, were, we caught our first one. <sighs> Slipped the leg on the second one. Mm-hmm. And the third one. Mm-hmm. And we were just too long next short round. And then I roped with Jackson Tucker. We were 21 on three. And... Had a pretty slow one that step left, and he got the barrier on the fourth one. But we, were make, we made pretty good runs, too. Gotcha. So. Gotcha. Um, and, Clay, how is your winner going right now with Jake? You guys just one um, second here. But. Oh, rodeo-wise? Yep. Um, we've been do- not that good. I, I, I mean, I haven't roped great. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, we, won, we won Denver, and then we've just placed. We, we've placed more than you think, but nowadays it's about what, who – who won what at Fort Worth and who's going to win something with San Antonio. Mm-hmm. And we did none of those. And so it just feels okay. That's um, that's just how it goes. I don't really like the way rodeo is getting with all that stuff. Yeah. They're putting it all at the end. It's not really good for the sport, but mm-hmm. it makes headlines. Um, but overall, to me, it's not a good thing. Yeah. And it'll probably get worse. So, Because it's just about one steer. I I like seeing the best guys win. Mm -hmm. That's why, like, guys that just rodeo rope, rodeo roper guys, I really don't have any respect for them because they're not that good. If you rope here today and rodeo rope, then I have respect. You know what I mean? Yeah. The good guys that jackpot good and rodeo rope good, those are the best guys. The guys that just rodeo rope, I know that's that's taking the easy way out. Jackpotting is the gangster. That's Mm -hmm. And I've always said it. That shows you the guys that can rope. Rodeoing, 
sometimes the worst run wins first place. Yeah. And that's what I like. The worst looking run. The header through and down, the healer board running crossfire. And that's not. This is good watching. That sometimes mm -hmm. rodeo to me. Is or like, like they say, like the one hit wonders. Well, that, I'm not even, I'm like not even that. naming names. It's yeah. just the people that. Uh, it's it's, and I'm saying this because I'm older. Mm -hmm. I would tell my kids this same thing. Yeah. We've had these conversations. My kids are going to enter, and figure it out. And just like I told, he Chase used to live with me, mm -hmm. and he's younger. I was like, what do I need to do? I said, you need to enter every single jackpot and figure yeah. it out. And that's all there is to it. And I said. There's two things that are going to happen. You're either going to go broke doing it, mm -hmm. or you're not going to do do it and go broke anyways. So you might as well do it. Mm -hmm. And that's just all there is to it. You have to jackpot, and what would be the fun anyways? Yeah. Of just going to rodeos, driving eight hours, running one steer. <laughs> what comes of that? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But jackpot, it will. It'll test your soul. Yeah. It really will. Rodeoing doesn't really do it. Everybody messes up. It's easier to win. You know, you'll get a good steer and win. But, uh, yeah, rodeo, jackpot can test your soul sometimes see what you got so but uh no i, I do I, lo I love jackpot and always have and maybe someday i'll put on rope and see i was gonna say i was listening to <laughs> your podcast hey. earlier today when chelsea asked you what you were gonna well, do i've been around it my dad and, does yeah. it all the time i mean yeah i'm around it i've broke it <laughs> i've been breaking this here since i've been a little kid so mm -hmm. um yeah my family grew up around it i don't know we'll see <laughs> <laughs> and chase how's your winter going with brenton right now uh, it, I've wrote, like he's headed probably as good or better than anybody. I've healed pretty bad. We won a decent bit at Denver. Mm -hmm. He turned me three at San Antonio. I missed every one of them. Oh, I got a couple legs, one a little bit. He's done. He's done good for me. I've, it's turned him. That's all I gotta say. <laughs> That's all I gotta say. Gotcha. Well, I think I will let you guys get on the trail. To your next locations. Thank you. <laughs> but congratulations and good luck down the road. Thank Thanks. you. Caitlin, Clay, Chase, great job on this episode. Thank you all for covering for me while you're all warm in Arizona and I'm here in the cold in Colorado. And thank you, Fastback Ropes, for bringing us this episode. Remember, fastbackropes.com. Make sure you're ordering your Excalibur and your Cobalt. Those are the best selling ropes for a reason. You can't beat them. Thanks. <laughs>